Lane Jordan Burday, along with Lisa Burkhart Worley, and welcome to Pop Talk, the program where you never know what topics might just pop up. On today's show, we are going to interview someone whose name might sound familiar to you because he is a Hollywood legend known for his action films. Lisa has more information on our guests. Thanks, Lane. Yes, today's guest, David Hevener, starred alongside legendary actors like Martin Landau, Tony Curtis, Sally Kirkland, and Karen Black. He also worked with Eric Estrada, Robert Reed, Margot Kidder, and Ernest Borgnine. He guest starred on the programs Hunter and the soap opera Days of Our Lives. He's been featured on Entertainment Tonight and Backstage West. He's also a songwriter who wrote two top 10 hits, You Say You're a Real Cowboy and Love to Love You. David now has a new series out. It's called The Last Evangelist that you're going to want to hear all about. We're going to talk about that today. So welcome to Pop Talk, David. We definitely want to hear about your new series, but first... We've got to go back to the 80s and 90s, back to our years. <laughs> Thank heavens nobody can see us, but we you know, we grew up in those years, and, and we want to know when you got into the acting profession. You were born in Louisville, Kentucky, and you were raised in a Bible Belt Baptist church. So how did you end up as an actor in films, and, and what was that season of your life like for you? Mm, well, thank you, uh, Lisa. Thank you, Lane, for having me on. That was a great introduction, and uh, I don't deserve it, but uh, thank you very much for that. Um, hey, I'll have to carry you guys around with me when I do shows so you can talk, introduce me. So I love love that. I um, I was raised in Louisville, Kentucky, and uh, I was um, seven years old. I, 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 I met Christ. Christ met me. I was in a like a Baptist church at that time. It was more charismatic, uh, but but I met the Lord and He was with me up until 19 years old. And at 19, I started drifting off, started getting into alcohol and and things like that. And then I heard some church bells on a Sunday night ringing. I, I was drinking with some guys, and on Sunday night I heard church bells ringing. This was in Kentucky, Louisville, and I went into the church and. Um, it's when I'm when I encountered the Holy Spirit. So I was saved at seven, but I had an experience with the Holy Spirit uh, at 19 years old. And oh, um, <clears throat> and at that time, that's when God laid on my heart. He said, you're going to change people's lives through the talent that I gave you. Uh, now, I didn't know what that was exactly because I wasn't really writing songs that much. I wasn't acting. I didn't know anything about that. But miraculously, eight years later, I was writing for um, Capitol Records um, for Marty Robbins and Hee Haw TV show. And I had a couple of top 10 records and started writing for Johnny Carson uh, and um, some of the um, Hollywood uh, game shows. And through that, I met film makers and actors and so forth. And I got into acting. And I got into filmmaking. And so some 50 movies later, here I am. Um, you know, this is the journey God has taken me through all these years. So he let me know at 19 that he was going to use me. He, he just didn't tell me how. Incredible. Oh, my goodness. Hmm. I, I cannot even tell you how that thrills because it's almost my story. I came to know the Lord. Well, I went to church my whole life, came to know the Lord at 16. Went to college, sort of gave it all up, you know, drinking, all that stuff. Same mm -hmm. thing, came back, came back in a hard way. So you mentioned the spiritual awakening and you shared that, but how did you go from that point into songwriting? Yeah, so once I had, I had an encounter with the Holy Spirit, you know, when that happens, you start seeing things and hearing things and look at things a little bit different. And so God showed me um, doors to go through supernaturally and um, he opened doors. And, and so that opened up my success as a songwriter. But I wish I could tell you things got real rosy. They didn't. When I ended up going out to California after I'd written songs, um, I became disillusioned, you know, on the streets of Hollywood and, and fell into, you know, all kinds of stuff that people fall into out there. And once again, I found myself, uh, you know, at the age of, you know, 27 years old, uh, off track again, not 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 waking up and going to bed with God er every night. And um, I was off living a, a, a very dark life, which I write about in my book. 
Um, but, but I was walking down Venice Boulevard uh, again on a Sunday, and I had two guys with me. And uh, we looked over, and I saw this guy preaching, and he was, he was holding a cross, a big cross, and he was you know preaching uh, repentance in the blood of Jesus. And so I walked past the guy, and of course, my friends were making fun at him, and people were making fun of him. Some people even spit on him, and I remember that. Oh. But, but God told me, he says, I, he says, this message is for you, David. I want you to stop. And so I stopped, and I turned, and I looked at the guy, and the guy looked at me, almost as if he was there just for me. And I walked back to him. I left my two friends who you know, looked at me kind of weird, and I walked to the guy, and I said, I said, you're talking about repenting, aren't you? He goes, yeah. I said, well, that's me. I have to repent, don't I? He said, yeah. So right there um, in Venice Boulevard, uh, Venice Beach, uh-huh. I got on my knees in front of that guy and in front of God and gave my heart back to God. And, um, of course, my friends, they were just in shock. They didn't know what to think. And he, the guy prayed with me for an hour. And I went home, and I was back on track again with God. And so then my career took off and started making movie after movie. Um, now, I wish I could tell you that I even stayed on track longer. But I, once again, I, it's not that I fell, but the story I'm going to tell you about now is a little bit different. From that point on, I was doing music in churches and I was going to Hollywood, making my movies. And on Sundays, I would go to church and make, you know, sing and be a music leader. But I had two different lives. I, I had two different personalities. I would go to church and I'd be one guy, or I'd go to Hollywood and I'd be another guy. And one night, about 10 years ago, I literally died. I fell to the floor. I believe I stopped breathing. But when the Lord brought me back, he integrated me. He brought my Sunday go to church, David, with my uh, Hollywood, David, Monday through Friday. And he merged them together. So no matter where I went, I took all of me with me. And that's what I call spiritual integrity. So that was kind of a completeness to my whole walk. Um, And this is what brought Last Evangelist is once I got to that point, I made a lot of people mad. But the good thing about it is you don't care. You just go in and you care more about defending God and his character than you do about offending man. Amen. Yeah. And so that brought about Last Evangelist TV series, um, which I play a cop. And it's a like CSI meets the book of Revelation. And uh, it talks about underground churches. I bust these underground churches for not registering with the government until I, he- I hear God's voice and, and I go blind. And with a Bible in one hand, a gun in the other, I set up after the Antichrist. But this whole thing with integrity, uh, God used that to develop the last evangelist, because he knew I would have to be strong in order to do this. Yeah, I love the story, David. It was probably my story as well. I was a television sportscaster for 20 years, and it took like a career crash for me to come back and to give my all. I was a Christian, but I wasn't really living that life. And it took something horrible for me to turn it all over to the Lord and, and just surrender everything. I was, then I became a Christian and someone who wanted to follow the Lord wherever he led me. And I continued to do television, but eventually took me out uh, and brought me back later. But I mean, it, he wants all of us. He wants us 24 seven. Then that's when he can do the great works, like what he's doing with you uh, with the last evangelist. Um, I, I had to get to this. One of your good friends in the business was Martin Landau. And I think a lot of people pro- remember him. I remember him. And in 2016, you had breakfast together and he said something that really blessed you. What was that? Yeah, we were at Cantor's on Fairfax. I'll never forget it. And uh, we walked outside after breakfast and looked in the window. And there was a, um, a nativity scene. But then there was also, um, uh, a, um, uh, you know, they, the, the Hanukkah, the, the candles and everything. And he, and he looked at me and he says, you know, he goes, um, faith is everything, isn't it, kid? And I said, yeah, I said it is. He said that's important. And he said, yeah. I said, yeah, it is. And um, and then one thing he said to me before we left, I actually recorded it. I said, um, what does it take to succeed, Martin? Like what what what? In other words, to make it, not just as an actor, 
but to succeed in anything, whether it's your faith, whether it's an actor, doesn't matter. And he looked at me and he says, just do it. He said, to say you're going to try it is to set you up for failure. He says, you do it. You don't try it. You do it. And um, that always stayed with me. So I apply that to my spirituality. I don't try God. I just do it. Okay. Um, and what that means is sometimes we may make mistakes, but God, I believe, would rather see us make mistakes and do it than to try something or to sit and analyze it or even worse, be afraid to try it. You know, so uh, he, even though he and I didn't talk about God a whole lot, we did that day and um, it was a spiritual experience on that particular day. I think it might have been either a Christmas Eve or it might have been Christmas Day. I, I can't one or the other. I feel like when you try something, you're setting yourself up for failure because you're trying it like you may fail. You're going to try it. But if it doesn't work out, but when you do it, that means you think I can do this and I, I will be successful. I think there's a big difference between the two. Yeah, there is. There is. Anytime you have a plan B, then just figure on failing because anyone that succeeds in life has one plan, plan A. And there is no plan B because plan B is, well, there is no plan B. Uh, so therefore, I tell people don't have a plan B, you know, if this fails, if it doesn't work, because you're saying to yourself, it may, it's probably not going to work or it may not work, which means you've now opened yourself up to all this neg negativity and chances are it won't. So when it comes to God and our spirituality, uh, go to God and say, God, what do you have for me? What, why did you create me? Why am I here? And, and I'm willing to go all the way, God. I don't care. I'll spend my time, my money, my influence, everything I have. I'll drain it all for you if you'll just tell me and show me the, tech, the steps I need to take. And God is not going to paint the whole picture for you so you can see it. He's going to sometimes just show you one step at a time that you don't even know where you're going, but you're moving one foot in front of the other. And this is the mistake we make as, as Christians. We want a little package that, you know, looks really cute, right? It, it's like our parachute, uh, you know, retiring from a big corporation. Uh, like we kind of know what the future is going to be. We're going to do this, go do that. God doesn't work that way. He takes Abraham and tells him he's going to be the father of many and, and tells him to go, but doesn't tell him where and how. So this is why I believe there's people out there listening right now. They're saying, David, how'd you make last of answers? How are you making this happen? I'm only making it happen by God, not on my own terms, because my own terms, I've raised money. I've gone to studios. God said, don't do that. Go to my people. They will fund it. Uh, don't go to studios. I'm going to give you a platform called davidhevener.tv, uh, and you'll air it there. And I said, God, that's very humbling. And God said, you got that right. And you, you, you need to, to go through this humble university. I said, okay, so it's on davidhevener.tv. We have over 900 videos on there on uh, different subjects that church won't talk about. So they can watch it there. And if people want to help fund it, uh, Lane and Lisa, may I tell them where they can go if they want to donate to the crowdfunding uh, platform? Yes, yes, please do. Yeah, so God told me set up lastevangelist.com. And you can go there and you can, uh, you know, donate a dollar or however many dollars God tells you. And you can get a T-shirt. You can get different things that deal with Last Evangelist. So that's how we're doing it. It's very humble. It's very difficult because it's not the way I'm used to it, but it's the way God wants it. And I'm telling you, I'm seeing the fruits of it. It's, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, we okay. want to go through your life a little bit more, David, as well. We still have about, have about you know, 15 minutes or so. So uh, we're going to ask you a couple more questions. Then we're going to really focus on Last Evangelist because we uh, we definitely want to get the word out there. want to talk more about it. And also, we'll give that funding information again at the end. Right. Yes, Thank we'd you. love that. So I appreciate that, Lisa, because, and I love what you said, David, is that you've got to have uh, a game plan of A, because that's why you've been married 31 years. Um I write books, Lisa writes books, and people go, well, how do you do it? It's because I sit down and do it. And, and it's very hard. But the second reason I do it is because God told me to. 
Yeah. And if he didn't tell me to, I'm sure he'd be telling me something else. And the third thing I, I love what you said is pride cometh before a fall. Being humble before God is everything. So everything mm. I have done, I know Lisa affirms everything she has done. It's all because of God. I wouldn't be with Pearls of Promise Ministries if it wasn't God. I mean, everything I've been able to accomplish from my marriage and my children to the ministries God has placed me in. So God, I am so grateful to him. So we're going to go back to your past life a little bit. You began yeah. publishing interviews on how your faith and current events intersect. I love that. And you also started interviewing celebrities about their opinions on Hollywood and God. Can you share about one or two of your favorite yeah. interviews? Yeah, well, let me tell you how that started, if I may. About 10 years ago, I was jogging around my favorite park next to Burbank Studios. And uh, God spoke to me very loud and clear. He said, David, um, you are going to have a huge um, uh, social media uh, ministry. And I said, what? Now, I had not had a social media account. I, I didn't have YouTube. I didn't know how to get on these. Uh, you know, I had some Facebook account, but I had somebody else running it. Um, I didn't know anything about anything. Right. And I said, God, that's kind of bizarre. You know, um, well, about two years later, um, God opened the door. And what the door was, was I did start interviewing a few people with my little camera on my phone and so forth. And, you know, I had a couple of hundred people show up on YouTube and I had someone help me set up a YouTube channel. But uh, and my kids, you know, they laugh at me. They look at me and pat me on the head and go, Dad, you, you old guy, you know, you, I feel sorry for you, you know. And I said, I don't care. God told me to do this, you know. And so I would, you know, and I keep asking them to edit. I said, will you help me edit? And I could see they would run the other way when I would have that look of, will you help me edit? And I said, you know, God, if you want me to do this, I said, I need. To, now, I know I've made 50 movies, but I've always hired an editor. I need to learn how to edit. I said, I can't do it. If, if you don't show me how to do it, and I'm willing, right? And you know what? In an hour, I sat down and I learned to edit. One hour, I learned the system. Okay, now here's where it got good. I was in Atlanta, I was in Atlanta, Georgia, and I got a call from a friend of mine that said, David, there's this Bible leaking oil over in Dalton, Georgia. You should go over and film it and talk to the people. So I went over with my little camera and I sat there and I, I interviewed people and I, I got back home and I sat there and I edited it, right? And I even did my own thumbnail, which was pretty horrific. Uh, I pressed the button and uploaded it. And so about two hours later, my son comes says, Dad, did you upload a video about a Bible leaking oil? And I said, yeah. He goes, you've got like 20,000 views. And I said, oh. And so he comes back three uh, hours later says dad you're up to 200,000 views and so uh, it, about a week later I was up to almost 3 million views on it and so that increased my channel of up to 100,000 followers and and then I started doing a live show which did really well for a number of years I'm still doing it um, and so with the, the, the reason I'm saying all this again I have to bring God into it and show you how God does these things when he tells you, you he has a mission for you he will always give you the provision if he gives you the vision, you see. And so um, that's how I ended up on social media. And without that, Last Evangelist wouldn't be where it was now, where it is now, because, well, I wouldn't have the eyeballs. And, you know, like I said, we've got 900 shows that I've done interviews uh, on my channel, uh, David Hebner TV. So that that's that's how all that happened. I love that. And uh, I remember when I asked my son, my oldest son, to help me learn how to edit audio. And he was so impatient. I think he was getting frustrated with me. But guess what? I learned how to edit audio. And now I right. edit all the, the podcast versions. Now, I don't edit video. I have somebody doing that for us. But maybe one day, one day I'll start editing video. But, uh, you know, the, our kids don't have enough confidence in us. They didn't think I could use an iPhone. And I'm using an iPhone now. So, so there. <laughs> but, uh, okay, let's talk about the last evangelist. Yeah, did this come about because of a dream while you were sleeping? Is that what you said, or uh, is that what I read about that in 2017? Yeah. Can you talk about yeah. the story again? 
Yeah, yeah. Once again, I was in Atlanta, Georgia, and it was an old house that God told me to buy. They were going to tear it down, but he said, I want you to buy this for the ministry. And so I got it, and it, it was real cheap, but the reason it was cheap, it had no heat, it had no nothing. And I was sleeping in the dead of winter upstairs in this house, trying to you know get it insulated and stuff. And at three o'clock in the morning, God woke me up, and within two hours, I wrote six episodes of Last Evangelist. Now, the first episode dealt with a virus and a vaccine and churches being shut down. Second episode deals with hate speech and how they're censoring uh, people and they have an AI Bible and so forth. The third episode deals with AI. All these were written like three, two and a half years before the pandemic. Um, so I, I tried to film it before the pandemic and, and even people that read it go, oh, it's sci-fi. And I said, God, you don't want me to make a sci-fi. That doesn't make sense. And so he wouldn't allow me to film it until after the pandemic. So we started filming in 2020. And um, so, yeah, now people go, oh, yeah, now I believe it. Now, you know, before they wouldn't, they would never believe that. That is so exciting how God placed it on your heart. And it sounds like such an incredible project. And we've heard that it's already winning some film festival awards. Do you feel like sharing about the storyline a little more in detail and what people can expect episode to episode? Yeah, again, I play a cop. I'm just an FBI agent. I carry a gun. You know, I'm well-trained. My job is to go in when they bust these underground Bible studies and churches. Yeah, I'm, to, I'm to go in and find out who they know so we can bust the next one. I'm kind of a negotiator, an investigator, you know, and, and everyone in Last Evangelist in society, they, they have some type of religion, but it's all one world religion, right? Uh, but there's a group of people called the true believers that worship underground. They won't adhere to the government regulations and restrictions, Okay, and um, so what happens is I bust this one family who has a Bible study and something horrific happens, I won't say, but it really sets me back and takes me back to my childhood. My grandmother always read the Bible to me and read end times prophecy scriptures uh, like do the work of an evangelist and things like and people in these last days will be blah, blah, blah. And so I start remembering these scriptures and so as I start looking at the news and the propaganda, it's the mind of Christ dealing with the mind of the Antichrist. You know, they're trying to brainwash you. And so, again, with the Bible in one hand, a gun in the other, I take off to find out what is the truth. I'm hearing a voice. I, I don't know that it's God. I question it. But at least I'm at least I'm headed for the voice. I don't run away from it. So. So it's a guy that, you know, it's not a movie that you're going to watch and somebody gets saved and then they live happily ever after. This is a TV series that takes you through a, a journey with a character that's real, like a lot of people. And he's trying to figure out what's going on. And God slowly reveals himself uh, to me. You know, I don't want to give the story away too much. Uh, episode two deals with the government Bible that they come out with. And folks, if you think this isn't going to happen, um, unfortunately, uh, you got a rude awakening coming because uh, what you saw with the vaccine, the virus, that's just a beta test. They're going to come out with the next uh, uh, phase of this thing, which is going to be really horrific. And by the way, in Last Evangelist, there's two kinds of people, the kind that took the vaccine. They're either dead or they're very sick or the kind that wouldn't. And it's hard to buy or sell. So that's the world in which we live in with Last Evangelist. So it's really current day. And do you feel like it's going to draw people in who maybe aren't Christians? Or are you hoping there's some evangelical uh, aspect to it? Yeah, it already is. Because when we won the International New York Film Festival, it was all secular. There was, I think, out of crowd of many, many people, there were only three or four people that raised their hands as Christians um, the rest of them were probably Muslim, Jewish, nothing, atheist, whatever. But everybody that I screen this, no one has said they, they don't like it. What they say is, we may not understand the God you're talking about. As a matter of fact, they say to me, David, churches, we don't know this God, the kind of God churches talk about. Because, you know, they're looking at religion, right, from a distance. I'm looking at relationship. Uh, but they say, but there is one thing that I agree 
we don't want our rights taken away. We don't believe the government's telling us the truth. You see, so what it does, God's using it to br slowly bring people in who belong to him. And uh, instead of beating people over the head with a Bible, you know, or throwing Christianity in people's face, because they're just going to run the other way. So that's really working. Um, what, what really doesn't work uh, as much is the traditional churches. They're afraid of it because they don't want their congregation to be exposed to any, um, any kind of negativity. You know, they're busy preaching a prosperity gospel. And um, so I've run into that a couple of times, but but not not real often. David, I for myself, uh, I left television for 20 years, but God brought me back. I said I'd never go back, but I, uh, I, I came back to do work for him, to glorify him through the media. It's been a great run. I love doing it. So how rewarding has your faith based work been for you? You know, it's amazing. Um it's been so rewarding spiritually, emotionally, mentally, even physically. Uh, it's not been rewarding financially. Um, but, you know, fortunately, God gave me a taste of that years ago. And I realized that that wasn't really what it was all about, you know. And um, so it's been so rewarding. And that's my concern. I, I want to and I say to God, you know, God, I know you want to take this thing bigger and, and everything. I said, but I, I want to make sure I can stay on track with you, you know, because Satan gets out there and, and jiggles that that money bag around. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I said, if anything, let me stay true to the message. Let me stay true to the message. And uh, and so far he has. He's let me stay true to it. So I'm very rewarded by this, uh, Lisa. I'm so excited that you shared all that. We are almost to a close and we just want to thank you, David for joining us here on Pop Talk. And we just wish you the best with this new series, The Last Evangelist. Um, do you want to explain again how people can give? Now, what we have is that we can donate to this series by texting CHOSEN, C-H-O-S-E-N, to 91999. Or go to your website at davidhevner.com. Or do you have another way for the for the viewers? Yeah, there's several ways. If you want to do donate to just The Last Evangelist, go to lastevangelist.com. If you'd like to donate to the ministry, which it all goes to the ministry, right? I mean, The Last Evangelist is a ministry. You can go to davidhevener.tv forward slash give, or like you said, text the word chosen to 91999, or you can even call 844-806-0006. Um, and, um, you know, you can find out more about, and we also want to pray for you all. So it's a way you can hit the prayer line too at the 844 number. Uh, thank you very much. And if you want to watch it, uh, it's exclusive on davidhevener.tv. And we have 900 shows on there. We have live TV 24 uh, seven. So you can watch it there. And we're coming out with episode three in a couple of months. Uh, go check it out. And we would also love for you to reach out to us here at Pearls of Promise Ministries and Pop Talk. You can email us at info at pearlsofpromiseministries.com. You can like us on Facebook and follow us on X at Pop Talk Media or at Pearls of Promise. We're on Instagram at pop underscore ministries. And you'll want to check out all of our Pop Talk television shows, podcasts, and award-winning documentaries on our YouTube channel at Pearls of Promise. So that is Pop Talk for today. We're just ordinary girls who God turned into pearls. Have a great week.